we've been uh, over the past few weeks redefining the line, the line that makes a distinction between those who are in Christ and those who are not in Christ, and that God loves everybody the same. He created all of us for the purpose of loving him, and he offers salvation to everyone, but not everyone accepts it. And so there is a distinction made between how he relates to those who are not in Christ and those who are in Christ. And uh, there's a benefit to being in Christ. In fact, there are many benefits beyond our ability to appreciate or earn or understand completely just how good it is, how much God has for us to be in Christ. Amen. And we've been talking about uh, those things, and I want to talk to you today uh, about the love of God and uh, maybe uh, help you make a distinction in the love of God. And I'll start with this. You know, we learned that on this side of the line in the law, this is where everyone starts out, right? And on this side of the line, you earn the blessings of God. You earn righteousness. It's up to you. It's on your shoulders. You have to, by your good works, and actions do everything right to deserve everything God uh, has that's wonderful and good. And of course, we learn that no one else ever does that. Only Jesus is the one who did that. And so in Christ, it's not up to us. It's up to him. It's up to us to believe and accept and apply to our lives what Christ did for us. So we made the distinction between it's up to me, that I'm the one who's responsible, that I'm the one who's getting it done, versus over here in Christ... Christ is the one who got it done, and it's up to him, and it's my job just to believe that and accept what he's done for us. And so a lot of people will say amen to that. You know, let me get rid of the burden of, of, of working and trying to earn it and feeling miserable because I made a mistake, and I'd say, praise God, get on this side of the line where Jesus wants you to be. I mean, he didn't die so that you could try to save yourself. He didn't live a perfect life so you could try to do it yourself. Get on this side of the line. And, and once we're on this side of the line, we might make the second mistake, which I think may be the most important, and I want to talk to you about that today. When you come over here and you say, I'm not going to earn it anymore, I'm going to accept what Christ did for me, and what that means is that I'm going to love God. I'm going to pursue God. I'm going to put God in my heart. I'm going to be the one responsible. We are once again on the wrong side of the line. Let me help you understand what I mean today. Let me start with this question. How many of you think it's our job as Christians to love God? Think about that. Is it our job as Christians to love God? Many people believe that being a Christian begins with love for God. That the foundation of faith is that I love God. And if I love God, therefore I accept him. I pursue him. I keep him in my heart. I mean, after all, we know the scripture in Matthew chapter 22. Jesus said these words. Somebody asked him, teacher... Which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and foremost commandment. Second, it is like, is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend the whole law and the prophets. Let's just look at that scripture. I mean, think about it. The command says you. It's on you. Shall. That's a command. You have to do it. Love, love initiates with you, and you have to do it with all of your heart. That means there's never a day and never a moment, never a time that you're not completely, absolutely loving with all of your heart. Now, if you think about it, that's really hard to live up to. You want to know why it's hard to live up to? Look at the first part of it. The guy asked Jesus, what is the greatest commandment in not grace, but in the law? And Jesus says, okay, as a matter of law, your responsibility is to love God and to love your neighbor as yourself. Are you following me? He's telling them this is a matter of the law. Remember, the law is that you do the work. The burden is on you. You're the one who initiated. You're the one who's responsible for it. The problem is we're not under the law over here, are we? You remember that? Let me help you with some scriptures. Romans 6, 14. For sin shall not be master over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. You are not under law, but under grace. Romans 7, 6. But now we have been released from the law. Are you catching that? Having died to that by which we were bound so that we serve in newness of the spirit and not in oldness of the letter. You hearing me today? 
I want you to get this. I know what some of you are thinking, yeah, but I do love God with all of my heart and all of my mind and all of my soul and all of my strength. And yes, you do, and I do too. But let me tell you something. You didn't love him because it was commanded of you, and you did it on your own. You loved him because of what 1 John 4, 19 says, for we love because he first loved us. Come on. Just the same way there's a difference between works that come from our faith in Christ and works that earn our faith in Christ, there's a difference between a love that comes to God because he first loved us and us deciding that it's our job to love uh, first. We must understand the distinction between the two. Now, you didn't love God first. He loved you first. And everything that you have in him is not because you loved him and you accepted him and you brought him into your life and you pursued him. No, it's not your job to love. Love is a natural result of letting him love you first. Now, it may seem like a small distinction, but I believe there is a huge difference between a Christian life that says, I love God because I've decided to and I've allowed God to love me and it's changed who I am. And I want to encourage you today, don't walk in the it's on me side of the line get over here and say I'm a Christian I'm saved I'm blessed because he loves me somebody say amen today there is a big difference between a life that's built upon your love for God and a life that's built upon his love for you that's what I want you to get today and I feel like there are a lot of people that say, okay, I get it. I don't earn my salvation, but since I'm not going to, I'm not going to go by my works. I'm going to go by my heart. Now my heart has to come up with love. My heart has to be right. And my heart has to love people. Have you ever known the, that you're commanded to love your neighbor as yourself? And yet you just have a hard time doing it. You know why? Because you can't initiate love. You can't make love happen. It doesn't come that way. It doesn't work that way. That's you trying to fulfill the law. If you're going by the command of the law to love, then love has to start with you and you can't begin love. Uh, the command to love says that, you know what, it's me that accepts God. And this is a lot of people's faith. They say, you know what, I'm accepting God and I'm bringing God into my life. I'm pursuing God and I hold God. In other words, uh, I place God inside of me. We say that a lot. God lives in my heart, right? And, and the spirit, of course, does reside within us. We're the temple of the Holy Spirit. And, uh, uh, but we say God lives in me and he goes where I lead. That's how we think. Like I'm going along in my life and I'm doing my thing and God is in me and he helps me with my problems. And, and when I get messed up, he can, he's like there to bail me out and fix me. And, uh, but the truth is really, I'm in charge of my own life all the time. We have this mindset that we've placed God in us rather than first starting with, I've been placed in God. And that's what I want you to get today is that the Christian life doesn't say I've placed my life or doesn't say I've placed God in me. It says first I've placed my life in God. And when I placed my life in God, then he places his spirit within me. It seems like a small thing, but listen, if you get the cart before the horse, you can get sucked up into religion, trying to do it all on your own and whipping up, trying to think emotions and feelings are part of it and trying to do good on your own. And you'll get on that roller coaster where you're up and down and back and forth and you feel like, well, boy, I'm really like Christ today. And then, boy, I'm really not like Christ today. And, and you get to, you know where you're in that place is when you start to feel guilty about how you're feeling and how you're relating to the world around you. And it's a miserable way to be a Christian because when I'm not feeling good and I'm not doing good and I'm not who I should be, I don't beat myself up. What I remind myself of is that my faith in him doesn't depend on any of those things. It's not just that he's in me. It starts with I'm in him. It's not because I loved him. It's because he loved me. Amen. Come on now. I want you to cross the line from living a life that says I've got to love God to a life that says he loves me. He loves me. John 15, 9, Jesus said this, just as the Father has loved me, I also have loved you. Therefore, abide in my love. If I could get this into your heart today, I want you to understand this. God wants you to abide in his love. 
God wants you to just simply accept the fact that he loves you and just live in that and, and dwell in that. That the love of God goes beyond whether we're good or bad. Come on. Come on, children of God. When you're on this side of the line, it goes beyond whether you've been good or bad. The Father loves you. In fact, the Bible says that while you were yet sinners, God demonstrated his love for you through Christ in that Christ died for you. God doesn't love you because you're good or because you feel good or because you love other people. He loves you because he's God and God is love. And that's how it is. And we must rest in that and believe in that. To abide in his love is to first know that God is love. Come on. There are a lot of the characteristics of God that we talk about. God is sovereign. That's an adjective describing God. God is uh, compassionate. God, you know, God is all powerful. God is all knowing. These are these are uh, aspects, characteristics of God. But but God is love is different. It doesn't say God is loving. It says God is love. You know, there's an equal sign. God equals love. It's the same thing. Anybody that has ever experienced any love in their life, it has come from God. Amen. You don't even have to be a Christian. You can be an atheist and hate God and yet experience love because God has placed love in the world. It's a part of our nature. Therefore, we love our spouse. We love our children. We love our mom and dad. We love all of that comes from God. It always initiates with him. And when we think of Christianity as love, we must understand that it starts with the love that God has for us. Come on. Are you with me today? He loved me first. Hallelujah. I know some people think, you know what, I'm just tired of the way things are, and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to pursue God. I'm going to put him first and I'm going to be a Christian and I'm going to, I'm going to just know and learn about God. And we feel like we're initiating things. And, 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 you know, once you get spiritually mature and you kind of can see the truth about your life, what you realize is that even in those moments where you feel love for God and you feel like pursuing God, it's because you're responding to his love for you. That the Holy Spirit has been working on you and letting you know how much he loves you and, and, and speaking to your heart and showing you how much he cares for you and how much he's done for you. And your response to that is, I love him in return and I want to know him in return. Come on. I want to be a part of him. I want to be with him in return. He first loved me. And let me tell you something. He accepted me first before I accepted him. Come on. The offer of salvation is God's way of saying, come to me, all you that are weary and heavily burdened, all of you with all of your mess and your past and your mistakes and your failures. And, and if nobody else wants you, the message is, I want you. I accept you. Come to me. Not only did he accept me first, he pursued me first. He came after me. Before I was even born, before my parents were born, before their parents were born, Jesus came after me. Before the world was created, a plan was made in heaven that Jesus would give his life because God pursued me first. It didn't start with me. It started with him. He loved me, Stephen, and he decided I'm going after that one. I will move heaven and earth. I will do everything I need to. I will give up whatever's necessary, including my own son, but I want Mylon. I want Lolisha. I want Harold. I want Doris. I want them. I'm going after them today. He pursued me first. He holds me. I don't hold him. You need to get this. <laughs> We say things like hold on to your faith and hold on to God. and That's good. That's all fine. But the truth is we're not really holding on to him. He's holding on to us. Hallelujah. 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 He's holding on to me. I'm here today not because I made a determination to serve God. I'm here today because he made a determination not to let me go. Jesus said once they've been placed in my hand, there's nobody that's going to take them out of my hand. I've got him. I love him. Therefore, he lives in me. He lives in me because I placed my life in him. He placed his spirit in me. It is him that keeps me from falling and presents me faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Amen. It isn't because I'm good or doing the right thing. It's him. It's not me that carries God around. It's God that carries me around. Are you, are you seeing the difference between the two? Religion will tell you that it's up to you. 
You've got to, you, maybe you've gotten beyond work salvation and now you're into love salvation. But if you think it's your love that makes it happen, you've missed it. God wants you to get over here and understand that's his love that makes it happen. He loved you first. He pursued you first. He carried you first. He holds you in his hand today. It is he. My entire story is built on this. God first loved me. Come on, somebody, let's praise him today. Hallelujah. 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 What I'm trying to get across to you today is you don't have to always feel right. You don't have to always think right. You don't always have to be right. You don't always have to do right. You don't always have to feel loving towards your neighbor. Let's be honest. You don't even always feel loving towards your spouse. Don't raise your hand. You might get in trouble. Just easy. Careful now. People are watching. <laughs> Feelings is not what love's about anyway. If you only loved when you felt like it, you wouldn't love like God. Come on. And let alone love your neighbor as yourself. Come on, I know some of you are thinking of and somebody lives around you and their dogs bark all night long or their cat keeps pooping on your lawn <laughs> or, uh, you know, they, they park in front of your driveway and, and you, you'd like to slap a fella. Come on. Come on, are you with me today? Oh, and sometimes I get frustrated with the people. And, and, you know, Jesus has been teaching me some things here lately. He's been putting some people around me that frustrate me. Let me tell you why. Because the Holy Spirit's trying to teach me that it's easy to love people you like. You want to love like Jesus? Get around some people you don't necessarily like and learn to love them. And if you don't know where to start, let me help you. If you're a Democrat, I challenge you biblically to love Donald Trump. To pray for him. Oh, some of you are, oh, you ain't swallowing that. And if you're a Republican, I challenge you to go home and with a heart of love, pray for Barack Obama and love him and wish him best. Oh, you don't want to hear that, do you? Yeah, it's easy to love people when you feel like loving them. But you see, the love of God isn't dependent upon who you're loving. It's dependent upon who's inside of you, right? When you get the love of God in you, you love despite what they're doing. Jesus said, love those who persecute you. Even your enemies, love them. That's the love of God. That's the kind of love that God wants you to have. Look at John. Have you ever read the book of John and heard this term, the one whom Jesus loved? About five or six times in there in the book of John, John talks about a disciple that Jesus loved. He doesn't say his name. You know who John's talking about? He's talking about himself. You know why? Because his identity, he made his identity not John, not disciple, not apostle, not a preacher, not a bishop, not a this, not a that. He called himself simply, I am the one that Jesus loved. My identity is not in my love for him. My identity is not in my position at church. My identity is not in uh, uh, how good I preach. My identity is simply this. I'm over here in the, I'm one of those people that Jesus loves. You want to know who I am? I'm the one that Jesus loves. Hallelujah. John 22. They ran to the tomb of Jesus. So she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved. He wouldn't even say his own name. He wouldn't even call himself what his parents called him. He called himself by his identity, which he had placed in the love of God. I want you to place your identity in the love of God. You know why you are somebody? Because God loves you. You know why you are special? Because God loves you. You know why you're an overcomer, a royal priesthood, a holy people chosen by God? Because God loves you. You know why things are going to work out? Because God loves you. You know why that no devil in hell, no problem from the past, no difficulty you're going through can stop you? Because because God loves you. You know why that even if you lose your life today, it doesn't matter because you're stepping out of this world into a better one, into the presence of Jesus? It's because God first loved you. My identity is in the love of God. Somebody say amen today. Why am I here? Because he loved me. Why am I am who I am? Because he loves me. I am today forgiven. Not because I decided I needed it, Harold. I'm, beginning, I'm forgiven first because he loved me. 
I'm accepted because he loved me. I'm protected because he loves me. I'm provided for because he loves me. I got purpose in my life because he loves me. I've, I've got life itself and eternal life and the promise of tomorrow because he loved me first. So my message for you today is stop thinking that you got to love God and first let him love you. Let him love you. Let God love you. You know, there are a lot of people today that in a romantic way, they love somebody. And they reach out to them and they, they try. They want to give their life and their heart to this other person, but the, the love is never returned. The other person just doesn't feel that way. And so it hurts. It's painful that you have this love you want to express but the person that you want to express it to won't receive it. And that's how God feels today when he expresses his love to you in the person of Jesus Christ. And he says, look, I paid for everything and I've done everything and I want to give you so many good things. And in fact, the, the very way you're created, you're designed to receive and dwell in and thrive in my love. And yet you reject me. And people say, well, yeah, God can love me. But listen, the love of God is not complete until you let him love you. Let him love you. So start with this. Let God save you. Let God take you out of the earning it yourself over into the just relaxing what Jesus has done for you. Let him save you. Put your faith in Christ Jesus and, and just know that in Christ you are saved not only from sin, but you're saved for eternal life. Amen. You can live with the knowledge that if you die today, you are 100% sure, according to the word of God, that heaven is your destiny. Amen. You can do that today by letting Christ save you. Not only let him save you, but let him keep you by faith in Christ. Don't walk over into salvation and say, I'm over here because Jesus died for me and did it all for me and I accept that. And then once you're saved, go back over to this side and say, yeah, but I'm going to have to work really hard to stay saved. In fact, I, I've been having a little uh, conversation with people online here recently about that. People that feel like you have to have a certain uh, mindset to stay saved. Like, oh, okay, well, you're saved by faith. But once you're saved, you got to do the works in order to stay saved. And, and, and I'm sorry, but, but Paul says, look, you've been bewitched if you think that. You've been fooled. The devil has took you back. And we learned last week that how we grow in Christ as children of God is called sanctification. It's not called salvation. And the devil wants to blur that line because he wants to make you feel guilty. And if you feel guilty, you'll try to earn it again. And if you try to earn it, you can't do it on your own. Come on. When if you just believe that Jesus loved me. Yeah, but you've been really bad, Pastor, and you've done some terrible things. That's true, but you know what? Jesus first loved me. I don't abide in my works. I don't abide in my, uh, my feelings. I don't even abide in my own love for God. I abide in his love for me. I don't hold him. He holds me. I'm not here because I decided to. I'm here because he decided to. Come on, somebody. Let him save you. Let him keep you. And let him transform you into the image of Christ. Here's the thing about the love of God. He will take you as you are, but he won't leave you as you are. <laughs> I'm so glad for the love of God. Now, we can step into salvation and know that we're saved because we have faith in Christ. But once we become children of God, God starts working on you. And he starts making you better. And listen, I feel sorry for people of God that just want to live like the devil and yet say, well, I'm saved by grace and faith in God. I would, I would wonder and question about whether you had a born-again experience or not, whether your spirit has been actually brought to life. Because the natural result of being brought spiritually to life is that you love Jesus and you want to love God and you you want to help people and God God wants to grow you you know what I'm better financially than I was when I was not saved I'm better as a husband than I was before I came to Christ I'm better as a preacher and as a man I'm better in every way possible when I came to Christ you know why because the love of God saw me and took me in just like I am but he didn't leave me like I am hallelujah let God love you and you know what the result of starting with God loves me is 
The result of abiding in his love is that his love will abide in me. Hallelujah. That's the purpose of 1 John. He's telling us, look, God loved you. And because God loved you and you're dwelling in that and you're abiding in that, then the love of God abides in you. That's why I love God with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind, because he first loved me. That's why I can look at my neighbor who sometimes frustrates me. And yet in my heart of hearts, I can love them with all of my heart, all of my soul, all all of my mind because he first loved me. This is the message, church. I want our Christianity to be based not upon our works, not even upon our feelings, but upon what Christ has done and because he loved me first. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Could you just praise him today with me? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We praise your holy name, God. We praise your holy name. We praise your holy name. We praise your holy name. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, he wants us to abide in him and him to abide in us. It begins with letting him abide or us abiding in his love first. It begins with us letting God love us today. And I want you to be free in that because today what that's going to mean for you is that even when you mess up, you can say, you know what? It ain't up to me. I, I may not have done right, but Christ did right, so I'm over here on this side of the line. And you may even say, you know what, I hadn't necessarily done anything wrong, but I haven't been feeling loving, and I haven't been feeling compassionate, and I haven't been feeling, and you can say, but it doesn't matter, because my Christianity isn't based upon my feelings or my love for people. It starts with his love for me, and I'm over here in his love for me. And so no matter how many times I fail or make a mistake, I always go back to the beginning, which is he first loved me. Do you know who I am? Come on. My name's Mylon. I'm Jennifer and Jeremy and Joseph's dad, Kathy's husband, Arliss and Gail's son. Above all that, I'm the one Jesus loves. <laughs> you can't take that away from me. Hallelujah. That's who I am. I depend on that. I rest in that. I want you to, too. I don't want you to live a life that is a struggle because you're trying to earn it, trying to feel it, trying to do it yourself. Get on this side of the line. Just let God be God, and you just be you, and you rest in that. Hallelujah. I love you guys.